Um, thanks for coming, everybody. I might just share my screen with you now and we'll get started on today's webinar, which is going to focus largely on managing your exams. So I'll just share my screen now. And from the beginning, okay. So I suppose just to give a bit of an introduction um, to myself and Alison who are going to be presenting today's webinar. Um, so myself, my name is Ashlyn Claffey and I work as an occupational therapist in Marino's Disability Service. So some of you may be familiar with me already. Um, and I suppose in my work as an OT, I support students in the everyday activities of being a student through one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, and Alison is here with us today as well. If you'd like to introduce yourself there, Alison. Thanks, Ashling. Yes, I provide academic support. I'm an educational psychologist, so my focus is very much on the psychology of learning. And that's what I bring to the individual sessions that we provide to students in Marino and in Trinity College, Dublin. OK, great. Thanks for that, Alison. Um, and I suppose, as I said, today's webinar is going to focus on managing exams. So I know many of you are coming off placement and entering revision week at the moment. So hopefully you find some of this content useful to get you just into the frame of mind towards the exams. Um, so we're going to largely speak about the areas listed there below. So first of all, checking your exam timetable and then checking your lens report for your exam accommodations. Then Alison is going to bring us through exam preparation and strategies. And then I'm going to speak about managing your exam and your study environments largely from home. So before we get into that, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to go ahead and pop them into the Q&A box. And we'll leave a couple of minutes at the end to just get back and answer anything anyone's put in there. So as we said, first of all, just in terms of checking your exam timetable. So the exam timetable for this period is a live document and it's available and accessible to all students in Moodle. So under the registrars area. Um, so there is a link that we have. And I think Louise, you're going to, to try pop it into the chat box um, for everybody there. So you can go into the Moodle check registrars area and this link will bring you there as well. So definitely go in and check that timetable so you know what dates and what times your exams are going to be on in the next couple of weeks. It's also a good idea to check your lens report in Maestro. So you can see here, uh, paying particular focus, I suppose, towards your exam accommodations and codes to see what your exam supports are. Um, many of you might already be familiar with what your exam accommodations are, but it's a good idea to just go back in and remind yourself and make sure that you're prepared to use them. So we're going to talk a little bit about what some of those exam accommodations are now. So some of you might have extra time on your lens report. And just to note, I suppose, in line with new guidelines, students in receipt of extra time as a part of their exam accommodations can download their exam each day at nine o'clock in the morning, and they will be required to upload the completed exam to Moodle by 11 p.m. on the same day. So that just means that there is a 14 hour window for the open book exams instead of the 12 hour window. But good idea then to get familiar with the amount of time you have to actually work on the exam and then add on your extra time to that. So you can see some examples in this table here. So, for example, if you have an, exa an exam for one hour, 20 minutes and you're somebody with 10 minutes extra time per hour on your lens report, you then have one hour, 35 minutes to work on that exam. So good idea to get in and get familiar with what that is for you. A disability sticker is another exam accommodation and anybody who's entitled to this accommodation through their lens report will be emailed separately with a soft copy of their disability sticker, which you can then copy and paste onto your exam answer booklet. The use of AT, which is assistive technology. So some of you might be using specialist software such as Gale Spell or Grammarly and you're probably well familiar with the use of AT if it's something you've been using all year, but do make sure that you have it downloaded on your laptop that you're going to be using in the exam and that you've tested it. Make sure that's working properly before the exam begins. So over the next week or so to just make sure all of your AT is working OK 
A for you. And the same goes for other equipment like the audio note taker. So please continue to use it as you might have done in previous exams and just to double check that everything is working. So just also to mention the disability service folder, which has recently been created for you all to access through Moodle. So today's webinar, for example, is being recorded and we will be uploading this recording into the disability service in folder in Moodle, along with any of the previous resources or webinars that we've created. So to access this, if you log into Moodle and scroll down, you'll see this section here that's called My Courses. And then you click on the student support services section. So you click to enter this course. And when you scroll down, it'll allow you to click on the disability service tab. And that will bring you straight into our folder where you can access any of our resources. So as I said, today's webinar recording is gonna be going in there as well. So that was just a bit of an overview of checking the, the timetable, the lens, and then Moodle. So if you do have any questions about your supports, you can always get in touch with us at access at mie.ie. So next we're going to move on and Alison is going to talk to us a bit around exam preparation. Great, thanks, Ashling. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so you are possibly going to experience a, a number of different types of assessments, whether they be online tests or a straightforward assignment or something called an open book examination. It might be something called a take home exam, so a questions or a series of tasks uh, which are online where you submit responses electronically within a set period of time. And these responses could be checked for plagiarism or collusion using something like Turnitin, for example. Or you are most likely to have an open book exam, so you're allowed to access your materials from your modules, any additional books and papers. So really the emphasis there is on, rather than being a memory test, it's looking for your reading, depth of reading, critical thinking, your judgment, your understanding of the topic, rather than rote learning or memory. And again, this will be checked using uh, plagiarism software. Next, please. So uh, it's possible also you might be asked to write a reflective diary or journal on your experience, for example, experience of being on teaching placement, or indeed on the relationship between the theory that you've studied and your practice. Um, that this is usually um, the case for professional courses. Or of course, you could be asked to write a case study, which is used to explore uh, really specific uh, problems that are identifiable in the area in which you are studying. Next, please. So what do you need to do in order to prepare yourself for your exam? Um, these seem to be quite common sense, but it's really important that you do this well before the exam so that you not beginning to feel panicked. Double check your start time, the day of the exam and the time and the date when it needs to be submitted, you know, on a certain day by a certain time, for example. Where does it have to be submitted? Does it need to be uploaded to Moodle or does it have to be emailed or in some cases uh, it can be both? So as Ashley mentioned, how much extra time are you being given to complete the exam? And what is useful to do here is, Ashley showed you the table on um, how to add your extra time on, but I would also suggest that you make it very clear to yourself, write this down at what time you start and at what time you finish with that extra time so that you can keep an eye on that uh, using your clock. So in terms of the topic areas of the exam, this is where you need to be really careful about interpreting what the exam or assignment question is asking you to do. What topic areas connected to your modules is it asking you to consider? Check how long a response is required uh, in terms of the number of words, whether you need to include any references, and what type of response is it? Are they short paragraph questions? Is it a, a full length essay? Or do you have to, for example, provide some kind of presentation? Next, please. 
Now, as Ashton said, it's very, very important to check your equipment uh, in advance of starting the examination. And that includes things like making sure the laptop is actually plugged in. Um, so we all do it. Um, we don't necessarily plug the lead in and then it's only when the computer uh, lighting starts to dim that we realize that actually we didn't connect it to um, the plug. Check what kind of a battery life you have, even though you may be connected um, with the cable, I would also suggest you make sure that there is 100% battery life in your laptop or computer. Are your headphones and your microphone working? You may need these, especially if you're using voice dictation software. Uh, internet connection, obviously very important. And something Ashley will be talking about later in terms of your personal comfort, that is the level of lighting and temperature in the room. Again, what specific software will you be using? Will you be using Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is speech to text dictation, or text to help read and write or Grammarly? Are these installed on the computer that you're using and are they functioning correctly? And that's the same for Microsoft 365 products such as Word um, or unlikely that you'll be using Excel and possibly PowerPoint. Also make sure that you have you know, a pad of note paper, pens and post-it notes, because the last thing you want is to use valuable exam time, sort of scrabbling around trying to find these things. And then again, as I said, Ashling will go into this in more detail, but have you set up your exam view venue correctly? Um, are you positioned in the right place in the room, which will help you to focus? Next slide, please. So what do you need to do in terms of preparation? Um, it's much more reassuring if you know that you have everything to yeah. hand and it's really useful to be organized about this. So either get a box or a basket and make sure that all of your notes, handouts, etc., are to hand. So put them into, physically put them into files by, or piles by topic, for example. Um, if you are using digital resources, so PDFs or Word documents or slides from your lectures, make sure that you have filed these perhaps on the desktop of your laptop or your computer, again by subject matter or by topic, so that in the course of your exam, you know exactly where to go to to find those resources. And it's a good idea to begin doing that now rather than on the morning or the day of the exam. Um, it saves you time knowing that everything is to hand and can be found easily because it's very disconcerting to realize that there was a piece of useful information or material that you had, but you, you can't now find it. Next, please. Now, this is a fantastic video that I discovered on YouTube. This student is a student of law and business, if I remember correctly. But the technique that she describes and in terms of creating an annotated um, book of lecture material and notes and indexing these so that you can find uh, topic areas really quickly. It's a really excellent video. It's only about five minutes long and I really recommend that you view it because there are some strategies here that you might find very useful. Yeah, I think, and Louise, I think, has just popped that into the chat box if anyone wants to access that link. Great. Um, again, making sure that you have post-it notes or sticky tabs to hand. Um, it's a good idea to do this in advance. If you're working from quite a dense amount of material, perhaps text that you have in, in advance, put those tabs or post-its into the pages that are going to be most useful to you before you begin the exam. If you work from mind maps or index cards, make sure that you have those organized as well. A list of definitions or glossaries or abbreviations. And we do have, I think in some of our materials in Moodle, um, for example, documents on what essay verbs mean. So how you are supposed to address the question. And then review the list of topics that have been covered in each of your modules uh, during the course. So what are the main themes? What are the learning outcomes? What are the key concepts? Who are the key theorists? 
and what do they say so that you have a kind of shorthand version of all of that information that you can refer to quickly. Now, some uh, brief exam strategies that I think you might find useful. So it's really important for you to understand what the purpose of this assessment is. Really, it's asking you to demonstrate that you understand the material, that you understand how to research that material, to read for meaning and understanding and to reference correctly. So it really is not um, um, a method of trying to um, test whether you've forgotten something or to find out what you don't know. It's an opportunity for you to demonstrate what you do know and what you do understand of your course material and that you can interpret what the requirements of the question are, that you can find that relevant information, that you can take good notes and acknowledge the source. So you need to do all of those things and organize this into a really structured, concise, coherent response. And that's usually in the form of an essay. So how can you prepare for this? Well, you're professor, your lecturer you may have provided some sample questions. Uh, there may be a previous essay questions or exam questions available to you um, from previous years. It's a good idea always to practice those. Um, sleep is very important. If you try to stay up for longer and longer periods of time, um, you're going to find that you're going to get quite tired very quickly and you do really need to be mentally alert. Your brain needs some time to process information to understand what that exam question is asking you to do. You do need to take breaks, especially if you've got additional time in your exam. Um, even if that's very small, your brain needs water, it needs fuel, um, get some sandwiches, drinks, readily available so you don't have to get up and spend time actually preparing these and it's really important to switch off your phone to switch off any social media pages uh, when you're working on your laptop or computer it's really distracting for example i've been distracted whilst i've been talking to you by conversations in uh, uh, microsoft teams that have been popping up on my screen it's really important that you um, make sure that doesn't happen when you're in an exam situation. Um, so that's that would be my advice in terms of getting ready for that. So it's not an, um, a situation where you need to overly panic. Uh, an open book exam is not really very different from sitting down to write an assignment home. It's just in a shorter amount of time. But if you do that preparation, that shouldn't be an issue. It's very important. I know it's difficult when you're nervous and your stomach's kind of churning, but you really do need to have breakfast uh, because your brain needs that food. And this is the time when you should allow yourself to have the food that you want. So if like me, that you would really prefer a crisp sandwich at eight o'clock in the morning, then have one. You need to make sure that you are, it's really satisfying yourself. If you're with your additional time, um, your exam period is going to go over into quite an extended time, you should actually take a break every couple of hours. Even if you stand up from the desk where you're working and you shake it out, you do some stretches or you walk around the room. So it's very important to plan out the amount of time you're going to spend during that exam. So take the period of the exam time plus your extra time and plan out how much time, how many minutes you're going to spend on looking for the content for your answer amongst all of your materials, reading that content and then writing that down as an essay response. So read the exam question and the instructions carefully. What exactly have you been asked to do? Uh, part of this is actually breaking down the exam questions. So I've put an example question up here. Um, sometimes it seems like there are a lot of words. Sometimes uh, an exam um, question might include a quotation, for example. Often this is filler that is not necessary to your response, but we have to break down the sentence. So what is this question looking at? It's looking at, drug use, women, poverty. 
So those are the th three core uh, concepts that you're going to need to discuss and to link. So organize your response, open your Word document and type in a set of headings, type in that question, but type in some subheadings, which you can delete afterwards, drug use, women, poverty. And then you're going to organize your thoughts into a set of headings. And it's very important that within those headings, they contain the points that you want to make. Don't use too many quotations. Um, the purpose of the exam is to make sure that you demonstrate your understanding of the topic. So you need to re-explain the information that you've discovered. Uh, submitting an essay that's full of quotations is as bad as plagiarism in many respects. So paraphrase and reference this. Um, don't include uh, the content of all of the material, lectures, tutorials, articles you've read, book chapters, notes, because it's not possible to cram all of that into your answer. The lecturer is looking for accurate, concise, thoughtful, reflected evidence that you understand the question. And when I said mentioned just now about putting points into headings, those points need to be very specific. What is the point that you're trying to make? How does it relate to the question? What evidence or example you can provide to support your point? And then what is your explanation or evaluation? So if you say to yourself that pretty much in every paragraph, you need to present this, it's called a PEE. -E. So you need to make your point, you need to give an example, and you need to explain how that's relevant. If you've managed to do that in every paragraph, then you've written a, a robust essay. So in terms of the actual writing, um, the language that you use, do try to maintain an academic tone. Um, you shouldn't be using slangy or conversational or everyday language. Your writing voice should be clear and formal. Um, there's quite a good resource here called the Academic Phrase Bank. It's a collection of sentence starters or phrases which really set the right academic tone for your writing because sometimes it's quite difficult for us to think about, oh, I know what I want to say, but how am I going to begin that sentence? So the Academic Phrase Bank collects all of these together. Uh, they're not considered to be plagiarism. You can use them in your writing because they're content neutral. They're not about anything. They're just useful sentence beginnings. I strongly recommend that you always do a spelling and grammar check just before you submit. And Grammarly is an excellent tool for this. Great, and I think um, Louise has those two links. So Grammarly and the phrase bank as well that we can pop into the group chat. Saves a lot of time. Now I want to introduce quite an interesting tool here. It's called a tomato timer. This is based on something called the Pomodoro technique, which um, suggests that uh, certain amounts of time or blocks of time are given over to certain activities and then that you schedule in a natural break. So this one here is uh, about 20 minutes in length, but you can go into settings depending on the length of your exam, and as I said to you before, that you have identified within that 90 minutes, two hours, three and a half hours, how much time for gathering all of the information, how much time for writing out a plan or a structure to your essay, how much time for actually writing a draft of it. So once you have figured out that time, could be 30 minutes for each task, 40 minutes, then you set the timer, you can select a particular sound that reminds you when that time is up and you need to be moving on to the next section uh, or the, indeed the volume as well. So it's perfectly possible to edit it to suit you. So that is running in the background uh, in the web. So let's take look at an example for, obviously you're going to have longer than this, but an example for a 60 minute or one hour plan to write an essay within 60 minutes. So we're going to set it to 20 minutes for each block of activity. So in the first 20 minute session, you start the timer. 
you're going to make a short outline or a list of keywords of things that you're need, going to need to include in your essay. Any abbreviations, mnemonics, dates, names of people that you suddenly pop into your mind and you're worried that you might forget. It doesn't matter about this being uh, very neat or well written. This is just a hierarchical list of things that you need to include. You might actually decide that you would prefer to do a spider diagram to show how all of these are linked. But most importantly, that 20 minutes is for writing down what comes into your head that you must remember to include in your essay. So write these down on a piece of paper. When you've done that, you have gathered all of your essential information. So the second 20 minutes is a really detailed uh, paragraph outline. This is a great example from the University of Leeds, uh, from the library actually, and the link is there. So this goes back to what I mentioned previously about making points. You've got all of the key things that you've uh, written down that you've got to mention. So now you're going to organize these into points points one to five, for example, one to four. And you're going to include the examples or the evidence, and you're going to do uh, include a quick note about why these are important. So you now have a really quick outline of what you need in every single paragraph. So then the third session, it's at 20 minutes, you can take your paragraph planner and you can really start to uh, write to it. You're going to flash it out. You, you flesh it out, sorry. You're going to really discuss the importance of the points that you've made. Your job here is to keep the examiner happy and nobody's trying to trick you into revealing what you don't know. It's your opportunity to demonstrate what you do know and understand about the subject. Make sure you really are answering the question. Um, don't waffle on writing pages and pages of content that isn't really directly related to the question. Uh, be analytical and focused because the examiners are reading a lot of um, exam responses. So they want to know that you've answered the question and make sure that your answer is completely structured. So there's a natural flow to it and it makes sense. OK, brilliant. Thank you for that, Alison. So that was a, a really good in-depth way to kind of prepare and then actually tackle the exam once you're in it. Um, so I suppose I'm going to talk next from the OT perspective about managing your exam and study environment while you're at home. So I suppose this is particularly pertinent this year because we're doing our exams remotely in our own environments. So we're going to first of all look at what makes up our environment. So naturally the physical environment is, is the most obvious and that would encompass the noise, the lighting, the physical space you have, clutter, you know, physical things around you. There's also the social environment, so that involves managing interactions with our family members, our housemates, our professors, whoever we're interacting with around the exam period. And then also our virtual environment, which many of us have been, you know, embedded in this year, whether it was doing lectures online. But now with the lectures are over and you're kind of structuring your own time, more so about managing distractions from emails, news and social media. So it's a good idea before getting into, you know, your environments in depth, just to step back and consider how do you work best in the environments that you're in. So even just reflecting on previous environments where you might have done exams or done study and how well did you work there? And are there elements of those spaces where you worked well that you could maybe replicate within your own home or your own accommodation? Based on that, you know, decide where you're going to complete the exams and then maybe the place you're thinking about at the moment, consider is that the only option and is it the best option for you? So just some basics in terms of the physical environment, you know, it's a really good idea to consider that and set up that space in advance of the exam. So it's not something you're rushing around doing on the morning of. Some, you know, obvious principles to have a desk and a chair in that room. If you're somebody who's living in a shared accommodation, maybe you can't necessarily study or do your exams outside of your bedroom. So if you have to do them in your bedroom, try to separate your workspace from your resting space. So ideally, don't try to do your exams from your bed. Try to see, can you separate and set up a desk and chair anywhere else within your bedroom? 
and just look around at your space you know is it tidy is there going to be a lot of clutter that's distracting you or getting in the way as you're trying to focus and more basic principles, I suppose, of the physical environment are ergonomics. So if you're going to be sitting down for a really long period doing a long study session or sitting down doing a two or three hour exam, consider the ergonomics there. You know, your positioning in the chair is your eye line looking down or are you looking straight up at the laptop? Because that can really have an impact on your posture and your back over time. So we have a bit of a diagram there, but additionally, I, I would suggest going onto our website and taking a look at an ergonomic guide just to give you some more ideas. Looking then at the visual aspect in particular of your physical environment. So I mentioned earlier, just reflecting on previous spaces that worked well for you and try to think about what were the visual aspects of those spaces and can you replicate that now wherever you're going to be doing your exam from home? So are you easily distracted by visuals such as posters or photos? If so, do you need to clear them off your wall for the week that you're doing the exams and put them somewhere else? Are you near a window and, you know, does that natural lighting help you or is it actually a little bit distracting to see movement outside of your window? Are you somebody, I, I know I was, that used to look for the corner seat in a library where I was completely against the wall because I found that I was able to focus best there. Are you similar? And if so, do you need to try to move your desk or your chair up against a wall so that you're just facing the kind of corner and the blank wall? and setting up your lighting to your preference. So I suppose, you know, whether that is the window lighting or, you know, a desk lamp, even basic things like making sure there, there is a light bulb that's working so that you're not doing your exam in the dark. And then in terms of other visual distractions, try to only keep the essential items that you will need on your desk. In terms then of managing the auditory environment, it's again a good idea to reflect on previous environments that worked for you and think about what the sounds and the noises were like there. So are you somebody that finds noise helpful? So maybe you like to work in a cafe where there's a little bit of hustle and bustle, or do you find noise really distracting and you like to be somewhere that's dead silent? You know, if so, can you sit away from a noisy kitchen or a common area in your accommodation? Um, if that's not avoidable for you, then maybe you can invest in a pair of headphones or earplugs just to try to block out some of that sound. You know, on the on the other side, if you are somebody who really enjoys a little bit of background noise to stimulate you, maybe you can look at creating a playlist for yourself on Spotify with some nice instrumental music or white noise even. So experiment with the sounds that help you to focus and then try to create yourself a playlist. So moving on to the virtual environment that we spoke about, so very much includes, you know, the online world, social media, emails, everything like that. Um, so as Alison mentioned, you know, really trying to get a handle on these distractions because it's something that is a lot harder now you know, when everybody is working from home. So because you're no longer in lectures, it is up to you to create your own, you know, study timetable and your own routine over the next couple of weeks. And I would really advise setting aside designated times to manage your emails and manage your social media so that you can get a bit more control over that. If you are somebody that finds it really difficult to manage distractions or to stay away from your phone, I would suggest investing in one of these internet blocking apps such as Freedom or Cold Turkey. So you can actually set a list of apps or websites that you would like to block and choose the amount of time you'd like to block it for. Um, I think Louise is again popping the links to these two websites into the group chat. So looking at the social environment then and how that might impact you around your exams, it is a good idea to let anybody that you're living with, whether that's friends or family, over your exam timetable and make them aware. So agree on quiet times with your housemates of when you're going to be doing the exam and when you might need them to be quiet or not to barge into your bedroom. So, you know, even if you do need to put a reminder or a poster on the door, such as this one here in the diagram, um, you know, I've had students before say that they were doing their exams next to a window and the postman came knocking on the window to, to deliver a parcel and that totally interrupted them in the exam. So maybe it's something you even need to shut down the blind and put a poster like this on your window or on your front door if there's a lot of deliveries coming in and out throughout the day. 
Um, you know, again, we mentioned the phone and in terms of managing your social environment, that might look like managing your phone and keeping that away when you're in the middle of the exam. So again, link in with your friends, even the friends you don't live with to just let them know, okay, I won't be available during these times on these days, but then definitely try to meet up with them afterwards and make some plans, you know, for your evenings or for the weekends during the exam week to go and meet your friends. So movement, I suppose, is another aspect. So movement within your environment and how you might be able to incorporate this in. So if you're going to be studying and doing the exams again for long periods, it is a good idea to try to take some regular breaks and incorporate movement into the day. You know, even trying to incorporate movement while you're studying can be useful. So maybe you have a gym ball that you can sit on instead of a chair maybe you can kind of walk around or pace around the room while formulating ideas or trying to learn something. And, you know, looking at your space, is there somewhere you can stretch, somewhere you can lie down and stretch out for a little bit if you need to? And then maybe you're someone who finds, you know, that keeping your hands busy actually helps you to focus and concentrate. So whether you're, you know, using a fidget toy, a stress ball or a pen, if you need that to focus, try to have a couple of items to hand there. And then, you know, lastly, just some additional tips for managing study and exams over the next couple of weeks. It's a good idea. Alison has already spoken about water and food and how that really will be necessary to give you the energy and to keep you going. But even in terms of the exam, you know, planning to have something next to you, like a glass of water or a snack if you need. Thinking again about the clothes that you're wearing. So making sure that you're comfortable and you're able to kind of feel relaxed for a long period of time. In terms of props, I know Alison has mentioned some really good timing techniques using the Pomodoro website. So that's a really useful prop. And then maybe you're somebody who uses a clock, an alarm or an egg timer or something like that. So if you do use those, trying to keep those to hand as well. And then I suppose lastly, a really important point I want to stress to stress is rest. Um, so you know, even if you have that 14 hour window, it's likely that you, you're not actually supposed to be working on the exam for that amount of time. And don't try to work all hours and stay up throughout the night. I suppose it's not something you would have done previously when exams might have been in person. So definitely make sure that you're switching off and getting a lot of really good quality rest as well. So that brings us then to the end of the webinar on managing exams. I mentioned the access at mie.ie email at the beginning. And again, if anything has been raised in the webinar that you feel you would like a bit more support with, absolutely don't hesitate to email us at this email address and we can arrange a meeting.